Hello, everybody. I am EPA WA meteorologist Jim Rinaldi here taking a look at the European and the GFS models and why they have such different solutions and which way right now that I'm leaning as far as the potential for a midweek storm goes. And uh, this is the European model. This will be Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. And uh, looking out west here where we want to look first to see how things might progress, we have uh, an upper level trough coming through the Gulf of Mexico into western Canada digging down towards the Pacific Northwest coast of the United States. In response, we have ridging building out ahead. And here we have a trough across the east, southern branch feature here, northern branch feature up here. Now, as we go forward to Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., you can see here this trough is still digging down the Pacific coast. In response, we have ridging building across the four corners up through central Montana and into western Canada with the features here starting to get into a phase position and starting to take on a negative tilt across the eastern United States. In response, we have low pressure spinning up off the Carolina coast. Now, as we go forward to Thursday morning, now we can see that those northern and southern branch features have totally phased. We have a negatively tilted trough out here, and this trough is going to be pulling this low back towards the coast if it cut off, cuts off like that keeping things uh, very stormy, very unsettled across the Mid-Atlantic region, up into New England, and uh, just going to move up like that as we go through uh, Thursday into Friday. This would produce strong winds in the 30 to 50 mile per hour range in parts of New England and down into parts of the Mid-Atlantic region. Also looking at heavy rain along the coast and some decent snow across the Appalachians up through the Poconos as well with this type of a setup. Now, as you can see here, the cold air is really cut off and trapped up in Canada, and there's really nothing pulling that cold air down. What's going to happen is it's going to be dynamic cooling. By that, I mean that this upper level low is going to create such strong lift, it would create its own cold air, and that's why we would have snow back through the Appalachians up through the Poconos uh, in that particular setup. Now, looking at the GFS, which is a much different solution, here we have the Gulf of Alaska low, but it is not as strong and it is not as far south. In response, we don't have as much ridging in the, uh, in the west, and you'll see that even more clearly uh, when we get to, um, to uh, Wednesday morning on the GFS. Here's our southern branch feature. Now, here's our northern branch feature. It is weaker, and it is further north and west. And watch what happens as we now as we go forward to Wednesday morning. Now you can see now... The, uh, the southern branch energy is starting to pull out ahead of the northern branch energy. But look out west here. Remember in the, GF and the, uh, the European, we saw this trough digging like this down across the, the Pacific Northwest coast. In response, we had the ridge across the four corners and uh, into uh, uh, central Montana. Here it's a flat flow. So what's going to happen is we're going to see this, this uh, system not be able to, to dig as much into the, uh, the Tennessee Valley in the east. So we're going to see this southern branch feature shoot out ahead of the, uh, of the main flow. And we're not going to get the phase. And that's very clear here on Thursday morning, 144 hours, is that the southern branch energy has gone you know, shot way out. And uh, therefore, our low pressure system, instead of being nestled across the Delmarva, is now about 100 or so miles out to sea. And uh, a couple problems I have with this. Uh, one is that um, the, uh, the GFS has a bias towards uh, kicking southern branch energy out ahead too fast uh, and too far. So that would argue that this would, uh, this would be back here more. And two, the uh, problem with the GFS is something called convective feedback. And what that is is that you can see this area here of enhanced precipitation on the GFS. And what it does is it sees that and it says, oh, well, that must be where the strongest rising motion is, so therefore that must be where there's low pressure. And it, it tries to pop a secondary low out here and pop everything further east than it should be. So that's why it has a uh, what we call progressive bias. It, it progresses things along too quickly. Um, so I think that, uh, that that is what's going on here. I don't, I don't believe this is going to be this far east. Now, on the other hand, the European sometimes tends to over-amplify things and, and hold things back too much. So I, I, I don't know that I buy the, the strong low right across the Delmarva either. I think we're looking at something that's a little bit in between. Uh, given the, the history of the GFS, I mean, the, the history of the GFS as well, but given the history of the European and how consistent it's been and how well it did with, um, with Sandy, um, 
I am tempted to lean towards it. My original thought was that it was going to be a mid-Atlantic miss and a uh, New England hit. Uh, that's what I wrote uh, when this thing first started showing up, was that that's what I was thinking was going to happen. I still think it's a worse storm for New England, but I think the Mid-Atlantic region is going to feel some effects from this storm. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit less than what the, G- uh, the uh, European is showing, but uh, I, I think we're going to see a low that's going to pop off the Carolinas here, and it's going to come up not quite like that, like the European is showing, but it's going to come more like this and then into New England is what I'm, what I'm seeing now. Now, this is quite a ways off. There are many variables. This is a very difficult forecast and is a very crucial forecast. So I don't want to give anybody the impression that I'm saying that, that the European solution cannot happen. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just I'm saying that I think it might be a little bit too amplified. But I think right now we are looking at uh, the potential for at least some stormy weather across the regions that were hit by Hurricane Sandy. I don't buy the GFS being this far out. Um, I, I think that there are going to be some effects from this storm uh, coming midweek. So uh, definitely keep keep tuned to EPAWA. We will keep you updated as new information comes in, and we are able to analyze it and discuss it amongst ourselves and then give you the best information that we can possibly give. I am EPAWA staff meteorologist Jim Rinaldi with the latest on a potential midweek storm.